Hi, it's Tim from OracleBase.com. In this video, we'll demonstrate the OAuth implicit flow for Oracle REST data services. The implicit flow is a two leg process. The application redirects the user to a browser which prompts for credentials. Once authorized, the browser is redirected to a specified page with a token as one of the parameters in the URL. This token is used to authorize calls to the protected resources. With the exception of the user confirmation, all the other steps in the flow should be handled by the application. All the legs will be presented separately in this example. If you're familiar with the authorization code flow, you'll see this looks like an abbreviated version of that. With both flows, the important point to remember is the calling application never sees the user credentials. In this case, AUDS handles the user login and sends an access token back to the application. I usually try to make the video self-contained, but in this case it would mean repeating the whole of the first party authentication video, so I'm assuming all the setup from that video is already complete. Before we start, we'll make sure the web service and first party authentication is working as expected. First we call the web service without credentials and get a HTTP 401 unauthorized return. We make a call passing the first party authentication credentials and our test web service returns the result we expect. We're now ready to configure the OAuth implicit flow. We create a new client with the create client procedure in the OAuth package. We've given it the name emp client but you'd probably give it a name that represents the external company or application calling this service. We set the grant type to implicit and we give it a list of privileges this client is set up for. For this example, the redirect and support URIs aren't real, but they'll allow us to work through the example. The redirect URI is the page that would receive the access token. The user AUDS clients view displays information about the client, including the client ID we'll use for authorization. This would have to be made available to the company or server that is attempting to authorize to the web service. The user AUDS client privileges view shows the relationship between the clients and privileges. We open a browser and go to a URL made up as follows. The base AUDS URL, the schema alias of HR, where the web service is served from, then slash OAuth slash auth. We're passing three parameters in the URL. The response type set to token, the client ID which we generated earlier, and state, which is just a unique string. When we use this URL, we get a 401 unauthorized page. Click the sign in link. The user of the application would now enter their login credentials and click the sign in button. AUDS then asks for approval to send the access token to the redirect URI. Click the Approve button. Because we cheated and didn't define a real redirect URI, we get a 404 not found message. But we can see the URL contains the token type of bearer and an access token. We can use that to access the web service at the command line. Now we can make a call to the web service. We include a header containing the bearer token for authorization. When we run this, we get the output we'd expect from the web service. As mentioned before, this looks complicated, but it allows a calling application to authenticate to a web service without seeing the user credentials. The application just has to know the client ID that was registered for it, and go through the user approval process to get the access token. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.